you to order. All right. So this is the December 8th meeting of the Kent Housing Plan Steering Committee. And um, since our last meeting, Alice has joined us as well from the Planning and Zoning Commission. So thank you, Alice. <clears throat> Um, what's on the meeting to the meeting agenda tonight is, uh, to, I wanted to briefly touch base with you all. I had a conversation with Glenn Chalder, who is working with the planning and zoning commission on the town plan of conservation development update and just give you a sense of what he and I discussed, um, about how to coordinate those efforts, um, between this housing plan and the, um, and the town plan update. And then uh, the big piece of work for us tonight is to finalize the resident housing needs survey questions and talk about how and when to get that out to Kent residents. Um, and we can also talk about if we have time and you want to, a possible separate survey that we could do of folks who work in town but don't live in town currently. Um, and or we could do a separate survey. For example, Virginia was interested in maybe doing a survey of folks who work specifically at the schools in town. That could be another survey. Um, and finally, just uh, we, we have been meeting, um, I think on Wednesdays, but we do need to kind of set a regular meeting date and time for the months moving forward. So. We can talk about that um, uh, as well. So that's what's on the agenda. Um, shall I launch into it? Sure. All right. Awesome. Um, so since our last meeting, I have had uh, the opportunity to talk with Glenn Childer, as I mentioned, who's working with the um, Planning and Zoning Commission on the town plan update. He was telling me that, um, oh, there's John. Yeah. Um, hi, John. Many apologies. I had a last right. minute visitor. That's all right. Um, so we're just talking about how we are gonna coordinate the efforts of this um, housing plan and the town plan of conservation and development update. Um, so as you might know, the town plan update itself is due in January 2023. Um, so the Planning and Zoning Commission is being very proactive in work getting, starting, getting started on that. Um, but um, my understanding is that there likely won't be um, sort of community-wide forums to get feedback and input from residents on that update until maybe the spring. Um, of 2022, and uh, Glenn would very much like to, and, and of course this will be up to the Planning and Zoning Commission as well, but to incorporate the housing plan um, and its contents into the town plan update. Um, so, you know, he and I work together on many other things, Glenn Shoulder and I, um, but we'll make sure to keep touching base and, and making sure that Again, there's, that there's a synergy between the town plan of conservation and development update and this um, housing plan process. Um, so are there, yep, go ahead. So at a, um, a previous planning and zoning commission, it was uh, mentioned that they wanted the affordable housing plan uh, included as an appendix to the POCD. Is that still the thought or is, is the idea to actually incorporate it into the POCD um, body? Um, I don't, I think that's really, it's kind of up to planning and zoning commission. Um, I don't know. Do you guys know yet whether you're going to want it as a bot in the body of the plan or in the appendix? I doubt that anyone can speak for the whole commission right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm guessing it will, you know, we'll bring this, this, I think ideally this steering committee would bring you know, the draft housing plan to the planning and zoning commission and have a discussion about what makes the most sense um, in terms of incorporating it into the update. 
Makes sense. Um, so I did want to mention that was a follow up item from the last meeting. And um, Personally, could I just, yeah. I, John is right. We're, I'm, being from planning and zoning, I can't answer it. But do you have any sense of what other towns, uh, whether they incorporate the affordable housing plan in their POCD? So um, every town's doing it a little differently. I yeah. mean, you are in the unique position of being both in the middle of a town plan update and doing a housing plan. Right. Um, so that's kind of a unique, I don't know any other town that's in that position, but um, you know, in most of the towns I've worked with so far, basically the steering, this housing plan steering committee develops the draft plan um, and then typically goes to the planning and zoning commission to review the draft plan and get feedback from planning and zoning and have the planning and zoning commission state that the draft housing plan is consistent with the town's plan of conservation and development. Yeah. And then the, the plan goes to the board of selectmen for adoption. Mm -hmm. That's typically how the adoption process works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, again, since you guys are in this position that only happens every 10 years of updating your town plan, um, that process will be a little different. Yeah, okay. Um, it looks like maybe Virginia lost her internet connection, <laughs> but um, I just wanted to mention, I have also since our last meeting had the chance to meet with Virginia uh, for some time and just get some of her ideas. As you know, we're trying to keep these meetings. Oh, there she is. Um, Virginia, I was just talking about you. Um, we are trying to keep these meetings to an hour. So I'm happy to meet with folks in between, you know, to get any feedback or input that you all have. Um, and then we can kind of bring the summary results to the committee. Um, so I had a nice long talk with Virginia um, about some of her ideas about what could be incorporated into the plan. Um, and I also got a chance to talk with Leah Polero, who as you all may know is moving on um, soon here. So I wanted to make sure that we um, heard from her in terms of the housing needs that she has been seeing. Um, and so I just wanted to update you all uh, that um, those conversations have happened. Um, so then I think we'll move on to trying to finalize the um, resident survey questions. And um, Jean, could you let me share my screen? Um, I don't know if everyone has them in front of them, but I can, I can screen share. Uh, what do I want to share here? Um, can you guys see the survey questions here? Okay. Yes. Um, so I think what I'll do, because I, hopefully everyone got a chance to look over them. Unless you want me to, I'm not going to go through every question. Um, I think what I'll do is just address the comments that I received um, and the suggestions I received, and then we can go back to whatever um, you guys want to talk about. Um, does that make sense? So uh, I think, um, let me see. So I didn't get any comments really on the first few questions. Um, I did uh, notice a typo. <laughs> There's a typo in this. Um, it said construct, it should say construct an accessory dwelling. Um, uh, Any other comments were down here in question 14. Um, 
which uh, talks about um, ask, asks residents what types of housing they think the town needs more of. And uh, there was a question about what is a paraprofessional. Um, so I would suggest that maybe we just say in this housing options that are affordable to entry level teachers and staff in the school district. Um, and then there were some questions about maybe adding some additional options that people can choose from, um, including adding an option of homes on smaller lots with shared community spaces. Um, and that was, um, Uh, that was David, I think, that, to, that was curious about whether people were interested in, um, I think your words, David, were was, was denser housing with shared community spaces, but I, I guess I'm suggesting smaller lot sizes rather than denser. Um, but would, would people like to add that as an option? Um, homes on smaller lots. Yep. This is Alice. I would definitely put it in. There's also a term that's used very widely now called cluster housing. Yeah. Which oh, is. Uh, cluster housing is when they're not taking up the whole lot. No, I know and that. I think <laughs> <laughs> when they're gathered, it, that's. With a community space, it's not uh, cluster housing. Cluster housing, if you look at the if the regs uh, or the PNs, uh, POCD, you will see that that's a matter of saving more area on the lot for open space and clustering the separate del dwelling people uh, okay. excuse me virginia i take it back i was just trying to add terminology other than shared space that's all and take it back uh, i was not being technical about it i was oh, only okay being, well i was not shared, being technical shared space is one way of saying it that's what uh, i'm saying <laughs> so david i guess the question is for you about what you were trying to get at because it my understanding is that you were maybe thinking about the project that's currently being proposed and whether that was the type of housing that people were interested in? Yeah, my specific question was really about density in general. There are a lot of different ways to approach density. So I might, oh, also, I didn't want to like, I, I might also say that our architect says those are very hard to build with, with uh, the code that exists because all separate dwelling places have to be enclosed by demising walls, that is, fireproof uh, separations. So building that uh, would mean that you'd also have to enclose this, the uh, community space. I think possibly that's an abstruse and exotic thing. I have heard of things like that called intentional communities, uh, but it gets you into a snarl of things. All we're doing is surveying people here though. Like, I mean, like, I, I kind of want to just like walk us back from, you know, this is not yeah. like, we do not have to put all of these things into our report. It's interesting yeah. that David had the comment and, you know, I, for all, I'm concerned. I, I think it wouldn't be out of line to have cluster housing or, you know, higher density housing. But I, I do think that those terms are right. often difficult to interpret for the layperson. So right. I wonder if we're going to ask those questions. Like, I wouldn't use the word cluster. I would use the word, you know, housing that is intentionally cited in a way to make room for shared open space or for the denser housing, you know, housing that is closer together, you know, uh, on smaller lots sounds better to me, you know, in terms of the general public. Makes sense. Uh, 
to me, the density is a kind of a general term. Most people understand denser means closer together. I didn't want to get into the specifics of homeowners association versus separate lots versus anything else. Um, and then with respect to the other question about teachers, my, my question is just why we were calling out teachers. And yeah. I think Justin and I kind of talked about, you know, if generally we're concerned about entry level people, you know, people who are earlier in their careers having trouble affording housing. I don't know why we might want to give teachers extra call out versus any other professional or other staff, you know, what about the baristas or the accountant, you know, young accountants or anyone else? I, I just didn't quite yeah, understand exactly. why teachers and schools were specifically called out. I had yeah, and again, this some... was uh, this was Washington survey and they were specifically concerned about teachers that yeah. couldn't afford to live in the town where they worked. Yeah. But certainly we can change this um, to say something else. Uh, there is another question, as you know, about um, Workers in general, do you think the town? Yeah, uh, I think it's down here. Um, you know, the availability or the cost of housing um, was the barrier to folks who work in town. Um, That's we, uh, that was my thought, Jocelyn. That we yeah. uh, we didn't mention that that retail, the workers in the stores. Um, I don't mind leaving uh, teachers and and educational staff as as a separate item uh, but we definitely I, I think we need to include that idea of the retail the service people in in town so do you want that to be a separate should we keep in teachers and staff in a school district and add housing options that are affordable i to... would suggest that perhaps you drop entry level since that is restrictive and some teachers are Part time. And so, I mean, why bother say entry level, just say teachers and staff? Yeah. Okay. And then, do we want to add another option for um, specifically for retail, or do we want to add another option more generally for folks who work in town? Right. So, there are a lot of categories. There's, yeah. you know, people who are tradesmen, there's firefighters, there's EMS staff, um, you know, public safety, public, other public positions. So it does start to, the box side start to flop out a little bit. Yeah, I try to make it as encompassing as can be. So just, just capturing the idea that, you know, we want homes that are affordable for people who aren't making, you know, 100,000 bucks or more, so. And I, I think this question, I, I would like to include uh, uh, sort of most or, uh, you know, generally all of those categories, um, because I think it sets the tone for where we're going to and, and, uh, and helps people responding to this survey understand what we're driving at. Um, mm -hmm. So I think, you know, retail service volunteers uh, are, are good, uh, good categories to put in. And I think probably, uh, Jocelyn, a separate box for, for that kind of question. So a separate box that says housing options that are affordable to um, people who work in retail, the service industry. Professional, trade professionals. Uh, I think what bothers me about this question is we're mixing affordability with different types of housing, like a, yeah. ch changes to the housing stock. Okay. I felt like the density question would be better here because we're really asking about, you know, you'll see we've got uh, allowing, you know, options for first home purchases, options for downsizing housing, options for uh, rehabilitation for older, so older adults. Density would be a housing structure that we we'll put in here, and then maybe if if we're really curious about affordability and having people who live who work here live here, that sort of seems like it's almost a separate question. I'm not sure what I would do with the answer about housing options that are affordable to teachers. Like, of course, if it's not affordable for teachers, it's not going to be affordable for anybody who's not making a lot of money. It, it just seems like we're sort of implying that an output of this might be. We're going to have teacher-only housing. 
I, I, that's why I'm not, I'm not sure why I'm like the, 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 we're asking sort of a leading question here and it doesn't seem to be orthogonal with the other information we're trying to pull out of the survey in this question. And I think that kind of rolled over into some of the 15 through 18. That people feel strongly that the answer about affordability to teachers is gonna actually lead us to make some sort of teacher oriented decision, I guess I would say leave it in. Otherwise, I'm, always a, I'm a fan of less is more to a certain extent. The next two questions ask about, about younger people and young families, which repeats this one about needing for young families and young people. And then the one after that, number 15, talk, talks about recruiting fire and ambulance people at other municipal. Uh, I wonder if those could all be combined after all if if you say that the town needs housing for these people and then you go and say do you think that that there is a not enough for these people you're repeating yourself and separating it you could combine those yeah. all yeah. in one you can make I it a question question actually for all yeah, of the different um uh that 15 yeah. through 18. Jocelyn, I think we're trying to say is this this uh, this question, this selection should leave the question completely. And it should be another question like, are you concerned with the affordability, the availability of housing for people who need to live and work here, such as teachers, retail, tradespeople, EMS, whatever? Like I think is this this question or this selection maybe gets its own call out and that combines 15 through 18. Yes, I think is a elegant solution. Okay, I took it out. Um, and um, again, that, that was just, uh, the, the idea was, what do you all want to know about what, you know, what residents think that the town needs more of? Um, and then the next questions are about, do you think the cost of housing affects the ability for young people to live there, for volunteers and for folks who work in town and for seniors? So not to yeah. hang on that question 14 too much, but I, I you know, looking at it, I think that um, we can tighten it up even more and make it a little bit more pure, even by saying housing options that, so the first uh, choice is housing options that allow older adults to downsize. I live in a three-story house. I would love to downsize. <laughs> I'm not a senior. <laughs> um, if I didn't have almost three acres of lawn to mow, that would be a great day. So maybe <laughs> also taking out those sort of assumptions in the answers about who would want to downsize, um, who needs to have um, an af affordable housing options, just and strip it out to housing options that allow um, for downsizing with the definition, housing options that are affordable to all, rental housing options that are affordable to all, um, programs that allow this one may you may need to leave the older adults to remain in their homes because that is a you know a specific um topic that is should be addressed does that make how sense about, how about allow mature adults to downsize instead of older so, so i'm really confused about this question because of david's comment which is true about it's a mixing of types of housing and the concept of affordability. And so if this question is about types of housing, then we should be asking about types of housing that you know really don't have anything to do with its affordability, but mm -hmm. about different types of housing that exist in the town of Ken. And I, I know that the POCD will get to some of that. So it doesn't have to be something that we ask about. But if we are asking about that, then one thing that I noticed is that this assumes 
that, you know, the only segment of the population that have like these special needs are seniors, which is leaving out a whole bunch of people who might have needs that are associated with certain types of housing that, you know, that we don't have in Kent and that we're not asking about. So, you know, housing that accommodates persons with dis disabilities, you know, is, is not something um, that we're asking about. Uh, and there are a whole host of different kinds of disabilities, including physical ones and mental ones, um, that we might ask about if we were concerned about that at all. I think perhaps the what Connie's saying is is right, and it could be done as a as a combination. It, that the question of whether. Uh, the town has those things is not really the question. Uh, it's whether the town needs those things. And of course, if the town needs those things, it's because they don't have it. So there's a, there's a kind of uh, halfway, uh, not getting to the point in there. Yeah, again, I, I think, um, I mean, I'm happy to change these to be a little bit more, um, less specific. Again, I think that back to John's comment earlier about sort of inspiring think people to think a little bit more about, oh yeah, what about the person who works at the Chinese restaurant or the, you know, the new, te new kindergarten teacher? Like people don't always think about um, where those folks live. Yep. Um, and I think that in Washington, what they were trying to do is get people to think about, um, yeah, you know, their, the, their young, their young I, families, the I older don't think folks. We're disagreeing with, we're not disagreeing with that. We just think it should be in question 15 or 16, I think is what we're boiling this down to. It just, we're trying to like want the question to be focused on what, on a, like a single access so to speak so like move all the affordability stuff somewhere else I mean we talk about types of housing here and then specific affordability questions that will help I don't know if it's push polling you're looking for but the idea is to list types of people so if question 14 is housing options related to downsize uh, housing options that support people who are disabled or need um, accessibility uh, Housing options that encourage density and community space. You know, more, more housing in rural areas. I don't know. There's a wide variety of things we could ask for. More housing options, uh, clusters in in rural areas could be asked. I think I'm just trying to list the things we've talked about. And then question 15 or six and 16 and I think 17. I can't remember from scrolling. Can ask the affordability type questions about. Do you, you know from an affordability perspective? Would you like to, are you want to see more affordable rental options? Do you want to see more, op, you want to see special programs to allow renters to make purchases? Do you want to see, uh, are you concerned that professionals who need to live in town can't afford to live here, such as teachers, EMS, and other, you know, other professionals? And like disentangling the, the intents of the two questions. Okay, so you want question 14 to be about types of housing and you want another question to be about the folks who might live in the housing. Yeah, and you can remove some of the old and young and other, other and, and, old, and just turn it into more general questions about the need of the, of the human who's there, independent of their age. But we can be specific about uh senior housing like the different options they could choose right in the not the types one but the the need of the people who live there yeah i, th I think the idea of putting a, a face on the need is in the, a separate question is a, is a is a great one i would suggest that david write the questions that he's just been outlining and send it to us for another time rather than going round and round on this. Let's work with something close to what David is recommending and see if it fits. We can tweak that rather than 
rather than uh, shooting out suggestions that, that uh, haven't been melded together. Yeah, well, I will take a stab after we get through with our conversation of, about making the edits that I have heard, and then I'll, I'll get it back out, and then we can you know, do one more round of okay or... Um, so much of this can be done by email if the people on the steering committee are willing to accept answering emails. May I also say that there's a term we use in affordable housing all the time, which is people with modest incomes. And that's a nice one. So I thought that yep. we actually were going over just the, the things, you know, I mean, the, the, there weren't that many comments. Yeah, they, they were mostly on this, uh, like the 14, 15, 16, 17, um, questions. So, yeah, I didn't get really any others. I mean, I got, um, David pointed out that self-employed is hyphenated. <laughs> um, and question number 23, I don't know how many of you got a chance to actually test the survey in SurveyMonkey, but um, that, blo that box does expand um, so people can um, put as many, you know, they can't write forever because we wouldn't want to hear from them forever, I don't think, but um, they can write uh, quite a bit um, in this box um, when it comes to taking it. So, um, um, so yeah, I think those are really the majority of the comments, unless there are others that people that I missed. I have one general. I have one general comment about uh, last week's things, the statistics, and so forth. The state defines uh, the thirty percent affordability it to include utilities and insurance. So that might be just put in there uh, when you talk about what's affordable, because that is. Uh, the state standard. Right. Okay. Um, all right. So are we ready to talk about how um, and when to launch the survey? Right. So Jocelyn, I, I just wanted yeah. to make one comment, which is not on the text or the wording, uh, yeah. but that if we can, we ought to find a way to translate this into Spanish and find a way to access our Spanish speaking communities so that they fill out the survey. So this is just, it came up in our ARPA meeting and it would make sense to do with this one as well. So how are you guys doing it for your ARPA survey? We didn't reach that conclusion. Oh, okay. Because I actually, I had the same conversation earlier today um, when I was meeting with the Winstead, the Winchester um, Housing Plan Steering Committee and Someone Googled it while we were on the meeting <laughs> and it said that SurveyMonkey does that. Um, so I'm gonna look into that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure they charge extra. So it's just a question of how much extra they charge, but. Um, and I think some of the universities, um, the Connecticut higher education institutions um, have programs where their departments will do that. Yeah, it wouldn't so just be a question of how long that would take, right? right. Um, what they decided we, in Winchester was to have a, a couple, like a sentence. And so however we launch this, you know, I think it'd be great in Kent because you've got that great e-newsletter that I believe a lot of residents receive. And you can put obviously a direct link to the survey in that e-newsletter. Um, what they decided to do in Winstead so they could get the survey out sooner rather than later is add a sentence in Spanish that says, you know, if you would like the survey in Spanish, please contact the first selectman, first selectman's office and then give a, in that will give us the opportunity to figure out. Um, yeah, I do worry that that's going to be a barrier. Um, because so what we 
found when we translated some of our signs on our trails into Spanish. Uh, yeah. we, we actually went to the Volunteers on the Green, which is a new Milford group that is uh, interested in, in English-Spanish literacy. Um, so we did use, you know, just to begin with, one of those programs that does a blanket translation, but we needed a beta tester. And so we found volunteers from town who were native Spanish speakers from two different countries, and we had them both read it and make some suggestions for a small speech. So that was a fairly efficient way of going about it. And I would also suggest that, you know, at the same time, we ask where Spanish speaking families get their news from, because if the town's newsletter is in English, then even if they're, you know, the, there's a fair chance that they're not getting their news from Jean's newsletter, however wonderful it is, and, you know, highly subscribed because they can't read it. Right. Yeah. Again, so what we want to talk about now is what are the many different ways that we can get the survey out? So obviously, one of them is the e newsletter, but what uh, are the others? Yeah. Jocelyn, let me make one general comment about the, the survey organization. <clears throat> uh, the first 12 questions or so, 13, deal with the person taking the survey. Then we ask about their thoughts about housing in town and needs. And then 21 and 22 go back to the person taking the survey. Um, are you full-time or part-time? What's your employment status? I just don't know. It seems to me that those should belong with the, the first set of questions. Just Yeah, and just to tell you my thinking behind that, okay. um, the, the questions at the end are kind of like, uh, you know, again, trying to get a sense for who took the survey so we can have a general sense like that we have a range of folks from different age groups, a range of people that are newer residents versus folks that have been around for a long time. If you've got, you know, both, uh, you know, full timers and part timers. Um, so, and I guess I'm, I just put them at the end also because if they don't answer those questions, like if they don't get to the end of the survey, <laughs> I want them to answer the other questions um, before I ask them questions that they think might be kind of crying. Um, <laughs> Okay, um, if, that's uh, the you, reason you, you have the a reason for it, so, okay. Um, Jocelyn, what's understand. the average um, completion time that SurveyMonkey gives you? Uh, five minutes. Okay, that's great. And that'll be pretty important to include in any content that we include because people are highly motivated right. by fewer minutes. <laughs> right, complete. yeah, so I do have, and I can send to you basically some example text that you could use in your newsletter that says it only takes five minutes. This is why we need it. Here's the link. Um, and then there's some shorter text that could be used in a social media post. Do you guys have, you have a Ken? You know, we always cross post out. Um, so we'll send something out via constant contact. We immediately do the social share through constant contact out to our Facebook page. And then I always cross post it out to the Kent community page. Okay. Um, and badger all my friends via text to share it. <laughs> and awesome. how about the Chamber of Commerce page? Or that That's a great idea. Because we're talking about wet workers. They yeah. can, it, well, and it, it is a different, the, the worker survey is different, but um, and we haven't talked about that one yet, but go ahead. Well, I think there are questions in here about people who work in town and can't afford to live in town. And that's really the essential question for the workers. And if we put the thing on the Chamber of Commerce, at least the people who run the businesses that they work for will have it, and they'll be able to encourage their workers to take it. Now, I have another question. Is this thing possible? Is it possible to hand out this thing on paper and have people answer it? Um, the answer is yes. yes. However, um, it is very time consuming to enter in paper survey results. Um, so 
either one of you will have to volunteer to manually enter the answers to 20 questions for everybody that answers it on paper um, and or you'll have to pay me to do it. Um, <laughs> so um, in the other towns, and again, most of what I've been doing with these surveys so far has been during a pandemic, but even not during a pandemic when we've done these surveys, um, almost no one takes them on paper. Um, you know, we we have we usually have them available like in the senior center or the library, um, but people take them and they don't return them. Um, I think in one town we had five returned when somebody was really diligent about, you know, asking people to take them right then. So we can certainly make a paper uh, version available, um, but it's much better if they do it online, um, just in terms of the work involved. And then you immediately include, exclude people who don't have uh, internet connections. I will volunteer to enter anything from paper, paper uh, surveys. Yeah, and and people I'm can go. I'm a bean counter them. from. I'm a bean counter from the day I was born. <laughs> the library is a good place to have both the paper copies, and to suggest that people visiting the library sit down and do it right there at the library because you can get an internet connection and use a machine at the library. That's a good. Alice, point. do you remember how many POCDs came in paper? It seemed like it was a non-trivial number. No. I feel like yeah, it seems like it was more than five or ten. Yeah, it yeah. Like it was more for that no, it was. surprising yeah. number. Mm -hmm. uh, so my recollection was the, 30 something. In yeah, relation to this. Yeah, I would say 30. Mm -hmm. In relation to this, I'd like to make another point. When Jocelyn and I talked about this, I think it was yesterday. Uh, she pointed out that the one of the purposes of this survey is to engage people. And therefore, I think it's possible that we should start off with some more encouraging thoughts about affordable housing in Kent. We do, after all, stand pretty close to the top level in this area. Uh, of housing. That doesn't mean there's enough for everybody. We could use three times as much, but it might be worth mentioning that we have Templeton, that we have South Common, that we have Stewart Farm, and we're always working for more. Well, and I, I, I guess what I would say, I mean, one of the other things that we're going to be doing next and talking about the next meeting is um, planning for the first sort of community-wide forum that will be part of this housing plan process. And typically what we do at that first forum is review the results of the survey, the resident needs survey, briefly summarize some of the uh, data about the existing housing stock and the demographics, and also talk about what has already happened in the town of Kent. So that would be the opportunity to talk about what Kent Affordable Housing has already done um, and you know how much infrastructure you guys already have in place that other towns don't have um, in terms of getting getting more done. So I um, I typically don't I typically don't recommend having a super long introduction to the survey because I worry, you know, yeah and so I guess that's where I would see that kind of information that you're talking about, Virginia, being best placed is at that first kind of community-wide forum where we're starting to talk to the community about, you know, um, what are what are the housing needs that show up in the data and in the survey results and what has already been done in town. That's usually what's on the agenda for that kind of first community-wide forum. I agree, I agree about that for the forum, but it wouldn't hurt to have a little charm in the first paragraph. Like, you think that might- You get to say something. 
Do you think that people would read that and say, oh, Kent's already doing fine. Why am I bothering? Pardon? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Connie. I wonder if people might be deterred from taking the survey if they're greeted by something that basically is more reassuring than, you know, I, I, I just, it almost is, and I, it, it's misleading because it sounds like it's telling people what to think, and that's not actually what we want them to think. It's just a little, I, to me, it, it, it's too difficult to give context, and I think that it might be better placed in the community forum, like Jocelyn is suggesting. Yeah, I think typically with the survey, you're, you're, you know, you're just telling them what, you know, why you're asking them these questions very briefly and then get into the questions. Um, that's usually how the how surveys go. Um, I did, there is a link there that says if they want more information, they can visit the housing plan steering committee webpage. We you could also say you could visit the steering committee webpage or the Kent Affordable Housing website if you wanted. Um, and we could put a link to the Kent Affordable Housing website as well. Does that make sense? I think that's a good idea. Okay. Well. Um, all right, so the, then the question comes to when you want to try to get this out. Um, uh, the next, oh, we haven't talked about when the next meeting of this group is going to be, but um, should we, you know, given the holidays and everything, should we just wait on getting it out till the beginning of January? That makes sense, I think. Yeah, I, I imagine people's inboxes are full of, you know, every by this, by that. Yeah. So it might get lost in the process. Um, okay, so uh, I can do this a revised version based on what I, I heard tonight get it back out to you all. Um, and hopefully I can do that by the end of this week. And then maybe you guys could try to get me your comments. Um, if you have any additional comments uh, by next week. Um, and then we can sort of get it all ready to launch hopefully at the beginning of January. Does that make sense? And we'll try to get it out by um, Jean's e-newsletter, um, which is, as she mentioned, also posted on Facebook, um, and get it get paper versions at the library and or maybe we could just make also like little takeaway slips of paper that maybe they would put at the library desk that has the link to the survey for people to take home. Um, are you good? And also QR codes. Yes. Yeah, so for the ARPA committee, we actually created a postcard. Um, that we sent out through EDDM. It's backwards. Apologies. Um, and we included a QR code on the bottom. Okay. So we could. Um, this, <laughs> Can we send that out to all residents? Is that some? Is that a budget thing? Or? Um, I'm trying to think. Um, I'd have to look at the budget to see if there's funding to do that. But we can. It's not that expensive. Um, you know, I think we're. Yeah, I think it would. I think it would be a good idea. We, Connie and I might know somebody who could probably whip something up, you know, similar to this, who knows Canva well and probably would volunteer her time if I asked. 
I mean, if you guys want that, I can, I, I've created postcards as well. Um, uh, you know, again, I think um, t typically with these surveys, we aren't, we're just, again, we're trying to engage residents, let residents know that you're doing a how you're, you're in the process of developing a housing plan and that they're going to have opportunities to participate, whether they decide to participate or not. <laughs> Um, and so, um, and it, it's not necessarily that you're looking for a statistically significant sample size. I mean, you can if you want to, but this is really just a sort of kind of another piece of information for you guys to use. Um, I might suggest you just go ahead and do the free stuff first. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't get the response that you feel like is robust enough to make any kind of um, you know, conclusions about then we could talk about, you know, doing things that are a little more expensive. Um, but, but if you want to skip to postcards, that's okay with me too. And I'm also working on, there's a, a new um, constant contact that um, I've, I think I've done three of them. So they're topic specific, much deeper dive versus the long sort of hitting everything newsletter. And the next one in the pipeline is actually um, affordable housing. So it's going to be very focused on this, um, the work of this committee. Um, it's going to have a lot of the data that Jocelyn shared, and we can spend a little bit more time talking about what this process is going to look like. And it can go out, it could you know, it can go out anytime, but it could theoretically maybe go out that first week of January. So people get a pop in their inbox of just affordable housing. It's got a completely different look and feel to the regular newsletter. Um, and so people will sort of be primed and thinking about that. And then we can um, shortly after that launch the survey, or we could launch the survey in that. Um, yeah, I think it would be good to launch it in that. Um, and again, we might want to um, put it in several newsletters. Um, yeah, for sure. And several Facebook posts. Um, uh, so when are you guys sending out your your postcard about the, the other survey? Did that go out already? Or? Yep, it went out last week. Okay. Um. All right, so we only have a few more minutes. Um, can we talk about when you guys want it, what regular kind of meeting dates? Um, I think we've done all Wednesdays so far. So I'm wondering about either the second Wednesdays or the fourth Wednesdays of the month. Does, do people have a preference? Um, well, Connie, yeah. conservation is third, right? It's the third, yeah. Let me just go to the town calendar. You know what? <laughs> Let me check really quickly because I'm not sure if we might have changed that for next year to accommodate oh. the Board of Finance. So I did oh. send a calendar and we can look really quick. Um, and then in terms of timing, I know we talked about six, I know we talked about six o'clock. I don't love six o'clock. I sort of like the idea of 5.30 or 6.30. Yeah. So um, um, Connie, the on the town calendar, the January meeting is the second, second Wednesday. The second. We did change it. I'm glad that you poked me on that because um, I remember we did do that. Uh, but that is because there is a board of finance committee meeting happening every third Wednesday. So right. that would so that fourth we vote for the fourth, although it means that lots of people on this call, not me, are booked almost every Wednesday of the month. Excuse so, me. I, I, this is Alice. I'll see you at this next meeting whenever you all figure it out. I've got to hop <laughs> off now. Okay. Good night, Thank Good night you. Alice. All right, so, so it looks we, like the only thing do... on that fourth Wednesday is the region one ABC committee, which is at seven, but I, that's, you know, a region one school 
meeting. So I don't think, imagine it conflicts for anybody. Okay. So fourth Wednesdays, okay with people? Great. Goodbye and then me. do you, sorry, John, you said yes? It's a yes. It's good okay. by me. Can we, could, is it okay if we did either a 5.30 or 6.30 rather than a six o'clock? Yes. Could we do a uh, 6.30 because it may, um, we have ARPA every other week and it may conflict and just back Connie and I right up to, um, you know, instant back-to-back -back meetings. Fun. It allows um, me to get from the parking lot meeting right. to my home. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. All right. So I think we just agreed on the fourth Wednesdays at 6.30. Well, and so the next meeting of this group will be uh, the 26th of January. And so hopefully we'll be able to get the survey out um, at the beginning of January and we'll have some, at least some initial responses to sort of see how it's going. Um, um, and I guess, so the question is at the next meeting, do you all want to talk about a survey for folks who work in town, but don't live in town, like a separate survey? Cause we could, we can talk about that at the next meeting. Uh, do you have, um, has anybody, have the other towns done one? Like, is there a template to look yeah, at? Yeah, I think I sent that around yes. with the- Oh, you did. Yes, I okay, I mean, I sent it around a little while ago. Um, but yeah, Washington did one of those. And so I sent their example. Yeah, I, I think the it's question is significantly different. I don't think I may not have been on the group when you sent it out. Um, yeah, um, I'll screen share very quickly. <laughs> Um, but um, they are, these are the questions. Do you currently live in the town? What type of, ha of job do you have in the town? Um, if okay. you don't live here, do you wanna live here? What type of housing would you wanna live in if you wanna live here? That, there's only six questions on this survey. Yeah, I, I think it's a, it's a very, very important survey to do. And I think the questions that Washington to, you know, sent out were very good. And I think you just need to, personally, I just think you just, can just uh, find and replace Washington uh, with Kent. <laughs> okay, so we can, but we can finalize that because um, it sounds like maybe some people haven't had a chance to look at it, um, but we could, we could finalize that, I think at the next, unless you feel like it's important to send to put in that newsletter, both a link to the resident survey and to the worker survey. Yeah. That all makes sense. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's also important to um, include the private schools in town because there's lots of people teaching and working there and uh, that has a big impact on real estate in town and the cost of things. I am pretty sure that the Kent School owns 19 private homes in Kent. That's a good proportion of the uh, rentable uh, spaces in town. And I think that's, they need to be uh, researched in some ways. I know that the Kent School has a lot of places on the campus for, for teachers, but if they have 19 other places, they've got mm -hmm. some other people and South Kent School and Marblewood do not appear to own private homes, private properties in Kent like that, but then where are they putting their uh, faculty? There might be as many as a hundred people. So that might lead us to a, um, and I I was just looking for that draft. I can't find it. So if you could send it out again, Jocelyn, it yeah. might lead us to a, not a sort of unique question to our town. Yeah. Um, 
And then Connie, did you did you have a comment about whether it made sense to have them together or not? I think it makes sense to have them together if we hope to get any of them at all. So I, you know, and I don't really think that there's, I think there's probably as much success in us going out and finding these people and just talking to them as sending out a, a link, but we might as well try it. It is the cheapest way. And I think it should be along, you know, a, a separate link along with our invitation to fill out our regular residential survey. That also yeah, might I be think even easier to um, attract or notify them because we could take out we could have a you know half page um, flyer that we ask we can go out to the employers yeah. um, and say and put a QR code on there and say can you post this on your employee board or can you post this somewhere that you know next to the coat hooks for your store for your employees and um, have them just shoot the the QR code. Yep. Yeah, and we did. So very... and, and sorry, in in Washington, what was successful was um, that the uh, the school principal sent it out to the teachers and staff as an email, um, and we got a lot of responses from that. So yeah, right. I think if we can, you know, if employers are willing to email it to their employees, um, you know that that is that is one way that we have gotten that, some that'll response. be a big chamber um pathway and i know the the private schools will all be happy you know they would all send it out okay great um i don't want to keep you guys because i know i promised short and sweet meetings um just a quick housekeeping i, I want to make sure we the board of selectmen has their meeting next tuesday night we need um, the board needs to um, appoint Alice, correct? She's the only new member from the PNZ turnover. Is that, I just want to make sure that I have that correct. Yeah. Does PNZ do it or does the selectman do it? Does PNZ so, have to recommend? I thought the PNZ did recommend Alice. No, she volunteered after the meeting, but I was going to bring it up okay. tomorrow night, a new business, and just get everyone to say, okay. Oh, that would be nice and clean. And then David, if yes. you can let me know or have um, Wes, you know, however you want to do it, just so that we make sure we do it Tuesday so that yep. housekeeping is done. I'll make sure it's on the uh, on the agenda. Great. Okay. Thank you everybody for your time. Um, again, if you have other questions, comments, ideas, feel free to email them to me. Um, I think everybody knows, I, I think I mentioned that um, I technically after the end of this month, I won't be working for COG anymore, the Council of Governments, but um, I'll still be working on the plan. So if you hear something like Jocelyn left COG, don't worry, I'm still working with you guys. Um, I'm just Will gonna... they allow you to retain the email address so that that's seamless? Yeah, I'll send you all my new email address. Oh, okay. um, great. So you'll have all my new contact information, but, Fantastic. Um, uh, but yeah, so um, thank you. Um, have a great holiday. Um, but I will be, I will be in touch by email with the revised survey questions, um, the worker survey and some draft kind of newsletter kind of uh, text. Okay. Jocelyn, if I can materials to you by Monday, can they be considered for the survey? Um, if it's related to things that we talked about tonight. Good night, Tegan. I'll send them, you do what with them when you want. Okay, sounds good. I'm gonna, so we're gonna adjourn at 7.09 and I will turn off the recording and say good night to everybody. Yeah. <laughs>